this is by design. I figured this much out. It really accelerates our spiritual evolution by having this feeling that we're separate from each other. And because of that, my favorite contemporary teachings is the law of one. Very similar to A Course in Miracles and some similar things. And that really, that material really blew my mind open. It was a perfect segue to get to the next step, which is there's only one of us here. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Sunday Communion Podcast, where we have free flow conversations with friends about their lives, their past, present, and what's in store for our future. We discuss overcoming obstacles, spiritual experiences, next chapters, life's profound moments in a warm communion with a friend. Together, we dive deep into the journey of personal growth and collective healing by healing ourselves and sharing those journeys. I'm your host, Lee Papa. Join us. Welcome back. In this part two episode with Ricky Rohr, Ricky shares what he learned from leaving the Raelian movement and his next chapter of yoga and a deeper spiritual understanding through the Law of One, the Course of Miracles, and awakening to the awareness that in this incarnation that we lead our lives purposely in the illusion that we are separate. Stay with us. And we ended the last segment talking about your awareness leaving the Raelian movement and not feeling anything but relief and a weight coming from you. No angst, no guilt or anything like that, but really relief. And so I wanted to go into that with you for part two about what it was that you learned from leaving that movement that didn't believe in souls that um, that led you to your next chapter. Can you go into that a little bit? That that's a tall order. I mean, <laughs> it's I'm a different person now, and now that's not it's not a good way, good way to word that. Uh, I'm just on the next step of the journey. Um, as I said, as soon as I sent the email, I felt this weight lift off me, and I didn't know what it was at the time. Um, I just knew that because I was spending between 20 and 60 hours a week volunteering for the organization. Now, this was 10 years ago that you left the organization? Yes, November okay. 2014, which is also um, within two weeks when I graduated my yoga teacher training. Oh. You know, I see it now as a very clear journey that, that my soul, um, or whatever you want to call it, the higher self, super consciousness, I don't know what you call it. And was guiding me through, and as it guides us, each of us through our incarnations, and the soul, I think, wants to have certain experiences. So, because the soul, for example, won't know what forgiveness is about, because when you're connected to God all the time, and when you're connected to the source, to the one, the all that is, don't feel any separation or any illusion of being separate from anything else. It, it, it's just the one eternal ocean and we're each a, a molecule of water in the infinite ocean. And then the, there's a great story, and I forget the source in, from the yoga tradition, where the wind comes along, blows the wave up so high that it starts to spray. And we're each these little particulates of water each individual, individuated soul, and we look down upon the, the vast infinite ocean, we're like, that's where I'm from. And then we splash back and down into it, and we're all back one with the Creator and with each other again. Um, so that's the way I see all of this incarnation. We have this illusion that we're separate from each other, the mind, the ego, and it's by design. It, it's not like we're, we made a mistake or we screwed up. This is by design. I figured this much out. It really accelerates our spiritual evolution by having this feeling that we're separate from each other. And because of that, my favorite contemporary teachings is the law of one. Very similar to A Course in Miracles and some similar things. And that really, that material really blew my mind open. It was a perfect segue to get to the next step, which is, there's only one of us here. It's just we have this idea that 
I'm different than you. I'm separate than you. Just not true. And, and yoga taught the same thing. Now, the law of one has a galactic alien connection. Is that correct? I suppose one would want to say that the, the so social memory complex um, that are in lower sixth density, um, and they used to live on Venus when they were in third density, um, but that was millions of years ago, and they it evolved and uh, ascended or graduated or harvested, whatever word you want to use. Now they're in lower sixth density, and they were communicating with um, through trans-channeling uh, with three people, uh, one instrument in particular, Carta, who was just a beloved soul. And so, yeah, they're, you call them, I mean, we get into the discussion, then are they really separate than us? No, they're not. Right. And there are levels of understanding. I just thought it was interesting thread from the movement to yoga to the law of one, which has a, has a thread to it, right? Versus going to another avenue, right? Christianity, let's say. But there is that more interdimensional galactic vibe about the law of one, in my opinion. Uh, I, I love the material. Yeah. <laughs> It's and, and you have to be ready to, to dig in because it's heady. I've tried several times and I'm like, what? Yeah, I don't stay with it, but it, it really served its purpose really well for a, a few years for me. It really launched me into a, a, a different phase, and I'm really grateful for it. We We went from the movement, and you started your yoga training while you were in the movement, correct? And the same month that I left the movement, I started my yoga teacher training. Okay, you started the yoga tr teacher training. Okay, and then... It's been yoga about eight years before. That. Okay, you were practicing it yourself. Any particular, what would you call it, modality? Like a lineage or something? No. What yeah. type of yoga? Vinyasa. Okay. okay. I started with a like Bikram style and then vinyasa. Bikram, God love you. That's tough. That heat's too much for me. Okay, and so now, so the last 10 years, let's talk about uh, your journey the last 10 years, and then I have a bunch of questions for you. Beyond the words, the, the last 10 years. And it's thanks to that dark night of the soul that I firmly believe if we're going to have our minds blown, that's how it has to happen. We would have to go through, at least I had to go through the squirming the the writing in this who was it said was it saint francis i can't remember who came up with that term dark night of the soul but then when you're questioning every ounce of what you thought you were yeah. it's painful it's yeah. awful and it is necessary for yeah. spiritual expansion mm -hmm. and, and was there a bigger gift for you oh and i've had multiple you know <laughs> I don't want to do it again. I'm like, I'm um, okay right now. <laughs> no, this is good. No, 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 says, I think I'm going to do it again. I'm okay. Yeah. I did two already. Can we, can we leave it at that? Yeah, they're not fun. I, and, and for sure. But, you know, like childbirth. When you go through this excruciating pain, there's something about it that afterwards you forget it. Like you can't. You know it was painful, but you can't tap into the pain. So some people actually do it again. Didn't. One was enough. But it feels like the same thing. Whereas you can't tap into the pain, but you know just em emotionally excruciating. But the wisdom and the knowledge that comes from that, you you can't buy it. You have to go through it. Yes, yeah, somehow it tears away at least one layer of the ego. Mm-hmm. And there's some semantics by using that word, but I think you know what I mean. I do. It's like it's like a sheath gets pulled away, uh, like a layer or two or three of the onion, and just to reveal a little bit more of who you really are. One hundred percent. You say, what would you say was your earliest memory of any spiritual connection? I say I was about about eight years old, and I was standing. Just finished using the restroom at my mom's house, my mom's stepdad's house. I was standing there, and I thought, 
what if after we all die on, on this planet, we're able to like share and access each other's memories and everything that I experience, every other person will be able to experience because I experienced it. And the inverse would be true, of course, as well, that every joy, every terror, every every single thing that every person ever experienced, I'd have access to that too. And that's exactly what happens according to the law of one. When in a social memory complex, we all share the same memories. We still have our self-identity, but we're all thinking together as a group. There is no illusion of that, that veil between the conscious and subconscious mind. You know, we're all connected again, and we all have access to everything anybody ever had. And that was about eight, years old. Yeah, it was about eight or nine, yeah. Wow. It was, it, was, it was kind of a what if moment. And it wasn't like, ah, oh, this is it. It was like, right. what? But again, I think that's more fortunate that we have these little experiences, these little places where we start to remember things on this side of the veil. I don't think we learn anything. I think we remember things. And so you remembered that you have a soul. When did that happen? Well, I kind of always knew it when I was a kid, but then I got into the movement. You stop believing that and then splash back down. Like in the, that story we just talked about, about the water, you know, the waves being shot up in the air. And it was like, I feel separate from everybody. And then splash back down. And it was like, this is home. I'm home again. Kind of reminds me of the prodigal son story in the Bible. Totally. Right? So we go out and we experience and we explore and then we remember where home is. We come back. Yeah. That's a, that's a very, very good analogy. Yeah. And then, then other other people see the prodigal son thinking, oh, well, that's, that, that he was a fool. You know, he went out, squandered everything. And, but I tell you that when this one came back home, there's so much gratitude. There's something, there's something to be gained there that doesn't, that isn't gained if you don't take the chance and go out there and, and like I did, I purposely tore myself away from spirit. I, I denied it even existed. And then the soul finally says, oh, no, 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 that's enough. Come on back. It's funny you say it that way because I've always felt like I can almost feel my higher self saying, come on, let's experience this. Let's experience the dark night of the soul. Let's experience complete separation. Let's experience complete lack. Let's experience complete disconnection, whatever it is, so that I can have the experience of coming back. Like, how will I come back this time? How will this play out this time? And it is a fascinating experience. And as I've gotten older, less whipped around because of the spiritual work that I've done. So now in mindfulness training, we are more the observer, right? And in non-judgment, that's what mindfulness is, awareness and non-judgment. From that space, you can really see the vastness of the journey all the nuances, all the, the yumminess, I love the word yummy, of the journey. So you had a lot of yummy bits of contrast, which brought you back home. Yeah. And that space, I had a conversation with someone the other day about why is it so emotional when you get to this place of, of really oneness with God, whether that is through prayer or meditation or yoga or whatever your practice is. For me, I go through this, this, uh, practice, this experience where I journey interdimensionally, if you will, to connect with God. And I'm talking all the time to God, but this particular experience, whenever I get there, I, I get a smile on my face and tears come down my eyes Dang. because I was mm, seeing it happens now. <laughs> Me it's too. never separate. We just, we just think we're separate, but we're never separate. Yeah. Really well put. I love. Thank you. And, and uh, all all paths. You you, you name several. All more. paths. They all lead to God. All paths. And, Thank and, you. And I just I'm just not fool enough to try to define what God is, because 
that's how I think I think it's a huge trap. You know, we try to define the undefinable, and because we are in third dimension, our telepathic skills, most of us aren't owned enough to be able to communicate without words. And the words are terribly, terribly limiting. Limiting, aren't they? Yeah. It's just like wearing a straight jacket around our mind, maybe our heart, our, you know, our soul, because this For is sure. the creed of our soul. And yoga taught the exact same things that, that you just said uh, so eloquently, eloquently yourself. And I just love diving back into uh, the remembrance. It's beautiful, and, and you're, you're right about defining God. When, when I, I use the word, and I've used different terms throughout my journey. And when I'm teaching, I'll usually say, Creator, God, Source, the Divine Universe, Spirit, George. And that either people get offended by that or, or people chuckle because I'm like, God doesn't care what you call him just so long you have a relationship. Now, my near-death experience brought the information back of using the term light instead of God, creator, source, of divine. So now I don't, when I'm speaking to God, I don't say light, but it's, that's the journey is to understand what the light is and whether that light has a name of God, Jehovah, Yahweh, Jesus, Holy Spirit, whatever label you have, it's more of the understanding of what that is, that creation energy that, that we are a part of, whether it's that droplet of water. That's the true journey is getting back to that. And the more that we label and separate and divide, the longer it's going to take us. And so really with this podcast, one of the missions, purposes, my whys is to unify. That's why it's called communion, little play on Sunday communion, but a communion of people, not of like minds, but people that are exploring, have overcome obstacles, have found a piece of their journey that is awakening them to something. As your journey has shown, it changes. With each pathway, you, you know, you might do a serpentine, right? Or you might, you might move around a little bit. It's not a straight path. And that being okay with those changes, is another reason for us to be kind to ourselves and to be kind to others in each other's journeys because we're all having it. You're just having it over there. Right. Um, the perception is that you're having it right. over there. Yeah, well put. And it's, um, and I've heard several, I've heard it explained several different ways and they all say that the end result is still the same. In yogic tradition, um, and in the law of one, the one infinite creator, it was unity. It wasn't duality. And it was pure unmanifest consciousness. I think uh, the Course in Miracles said that it had the original thought, what if? In other words, what if I divide myself into two and start experiencing myself in duality in which, and put free will into place so that everything single thing that's created has free will and we and that's exactly what the creator wants it wants to experience itself in every possible way which is infinity so your journey my journey my beloved cat's journeys you know they are the creator experiencing itself in a certain perspective it's magnificent. And how can you not cry when you realize that? Indeed. What do you think the purpose of life is? Do you think it's just that? I think the purpose is what we make of it, first of all. Um, now, if you're asking what I think God's purpose is, I think the, the, what I just explained is the closest I can come to understanding that. And I don't pretend to understand it. I'm just saying that's what rings true so far. To say it's it's what I know to be true today for me, what I know to be true for me today. Will that change 
tomorrow or a week from now or a month from now. Hope so. Hope so. Right. Yeah. I hope so. And I'm okay with saying I was wrong or I'm okay with saying that's not what's ringing true for me right now because it might ring true for you because that's where you are on your path, right? But just a couple more questions before we wrap up. I want to find some juicy ones for you. So how does God or whatever name you want to plug in there reveal himself to you? It's a good question. And, and I wonder about that a lot. And I'm of the understanding now that everything God and everything that I experience is the creator experiencing itself through me and so especially the stuff that makes me uncomfortable I, I really try to bless it and recognize instead of I'm squirmy I want to add this no what opportunity do I have to learn here and it's very I think, mindful yeah I hope so and do I always succeed at that no you know I, I do a lot of squirming and uh couple of four-letter words occasionally. <laughs> um, but more and more, man, geez, I'm 66. You know, I've been thinking about this stuff at least since I was eight. So that's the way the Creator revealed itself to me, um, is through joys, through sorrows, through terror, through doubt, through faith, through successes, through self-imposed humiliation. Through, through it all. And it takes me back to what I believe, at least at this point, is that the Creator wants me to use my free will to experience all possible things, including what I did for over 23 years, denying the Creator that like, you don't even exist. And, and the Creator's like, yeah, that's exactly what I want. I want to know what it's like to not believe in me. I think every single thing is legitimate. Especially, we talk about a nutty world living in duality right now. Two people can see the same thing, and it's completely different for two people. Perception, yeah. Yeah. And I do believe there's a bifurcation happening energetically where people are choosing basically, like Dolores Cannon used to talk about which planet they want to live on. And I don't know how to, to dice all that out, but inherently, I feel like. That's still what's what's going on. And God, we only live a few decades. And how many incarnations do we go through? And how many does it take? I don't know. And I think about this crap all the bloody time. <laughs> yeah, I joke about saying, yeah, I made a mistake by saying and declaring this is going to be my last time, so bring it on. <laughs> yeah, give me, give me the whole... I retract whole, that? Give me the whole workload. I'm, this is the last time I'm coming here. <laughs> So do you pray? And what does prayer look like for you? For me, prayer looks like to to really apply myself deeper into being in service to others, to send blessings and ask for a little reinforcement for those blessings. Because I do think that I'm the creator as well as you. And I learned something about being a sovereign being when I was in the Raelian movement and not depending on something, quote, above me to guide me, but only my conscience. And then having come full circle into surrendering once again to the Creator, I'm so blessed to have both things. So prayer for me is to put myself in service to others. And I read, there's a beautiful short, short poem by either Rumi or the Sufi saying, I can't quote it, so I don't want to hurt it or destroy it. But basically, I dreamed that life was bliss, that I woke and realized that being in service of bliss and basically merging those two together. So now I realize that bliss is being in service to others. Beautiful. Thank you, Ricky. I think we'll wrap up there for at least this segment because I know we have a lot more we could talk about. I just want to thank you so much for your time, for your authenticity, and for sharing with us. Thank you. I mean, we have some mutual friends that said, you and Lee should speak sometime. And we know who they are. Yes. So we, we both trust them and love them beyond what this planet knows. 
And uh, and they were sure right. You know, I found my best sister from another mister. Exactly. Thank you. I'm giving you a big hug. Same. And I'll talk to you soon. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for sharing your precious time with us today. I hope you enjoyed our interview with Ricky. Please do not forget to subscribe, click notification button, comment, tell the cows come home with nice, supportive, loving comments, please. And be sure to buy Ricky's book. You won't regret it. The link is in the description box along with links for the Amazon storefront full of health and wellness products and information and free download in the link tree link that will explore a plethora of other options and things to uh, check out. I look forward to seeing you again on Sunday for our new drop and interview for the Sunday Communion podcast. Be happy in the morning, every afternoon and evening. You don't need a reason to be happy, it's already in you. Be happy when you wake up, before you shower or your makeup. Look in the mirror and smile at you. No one can do it as good as you Just start the smile and then you'll know It's already in you It's already in you Be happy cause you want to No one can ever take this from you Being happy for no reason means you're really truly happy happy for no reason don't need a reason to be happy this the season to be happy reasons only make you crabby there's a smile inside of you don't be so sad what's the matter you just take a look around and shut up be happy in the morning, every afternoon and evening You don't need a reason to be happy, it's already in you Be happy when you wake up Before you shower or your makeup Look in the mirror and smile at you no one can do it as good as you Just start to smile because It's already in you It's already in you Be happy cause you want to No one can ever take this from you Being happy for no reason means you're really truly happy Rain or shine every season Cause the season to be happy Reasons only make you crabby There's a smile inside of you Don't be so sad, what's the matter, you? Just take a look around And shut up and be happy Shut up and be happy Cause I got this and that I gotta do later today No time oh. to be crabby The damn dog is barking all night long Shut up and, and be sleep. happy Oh jeez Your life's not so shabby Yeah, maybe not Shut, Shut up, up and be happy, happy. Alright, you're right Being sad is crappy Well, you got a good point there Shut, Shut up, up and be happy, happy. Alrighty then Just shut up and be yeah. happy